Okay, so we're doing fluid kinematics, and we've talked about how we have an Eulerian point of view for describing fluid flow, which tell which the Eulerian point of view for fluid flow says that some velocity is equal to a u component, which is a function of x, y, z, and t times i hat plus v, some y component times x, y, z, and t times j hat plus some w component times x, y, z and t times k hat. And the important part of an Eulerian point of view is that um, the fluid velocity is a function of position and time, not just time, right? So we, you're used to throwing a ball around and describing its velocity with respect to time and then integrating that to find its position. But now we're just going to say everywhere we have a fluid, everywhere we can describe the um, velocity of the fluid at that point and at that time. And we're going to develop um, relationships between fluid, uh, between different points in space um, that are based on the properties of fluids. So we know that if the fluid is flowing with some velocity at point x, y, z, and t, then it must be related to it through shear stress and pressure and, um, and inertial effects uh, to another point um, nearby. We'll get to that with Navier Stokes. But um, Right now, we're trying to describe uh, the fluid flow if we're given a um, set of velocities as a function of space and time. And this often happens with computational fluid dynamics packages. So they'll spit out a tremendous amount of data, which is the velocities everywhere with time and space, and you have to do something with it. And we talked about dilatational constants. We can tell how much the density is changing, um, how much the fluid is either expanding or contracting, we talked about how that relates to continuity equation, which is an expression of conservation of mass, right? And finally, we're going to calculate the amount of rotation in a flow. So this is um, really useful to characterize turbulence and or lift. Um, we call this the vorticity, which is a very important property in fluid mechanics. This is a vector quantity. So just like velocity is a vector quantity, this has a direction and it measures the amount of rotation around each axis. Um, so I'm going to write vorticity out as uh, I don't know what this is called. I keep forgetting every year. I think it's called psi. It's one of my favorite Greek letters to write. Um, we're going to say that's equal to 2 times omega, which is... Um, this is called the amount of rotation. In your book... Um, Dr. Burge and I will almost always use the expression for psi. Um, and this uh, is going to be equal to the um, Laplacian mm, crossed into uh, the velocity, which is going to be equal to, if we write out all the different components, dw dy minus dv dz times i hat plus du dz minus dw dx j hat plus dv dx minus du dy k hat. So you notice it's a vector quantity. We have i hat, j hat, k hat. Um, and yeah. So if this quantity, if our vorticity is equal to zero, then flow is called irrotational. Um, this uh, greatly simplifies the analysis of some flows um, because vorticity is a measure of both losses and things like lift and drag. So a airplane wing adds vorticity to the air 
as it flies through the flies in order to and that and it's one of the consequences of generating lift um, but also uh, viscous flows generate vorticity okay so let's practice this we have our velocity is equal to x squared plus y squared i hat minus 2xy j hat we want to know is this flow irrotational and is it expanding or contracting so let's first do the irrotational part we have we have i so here's our u and here's our v and our Oops, I didn't do a very good psi there, did I? It's fine, we get a chance to rewrite it. Psi is equal to um, delta cross v hat, or sorry, delta cross v, which is equal to dw dx minus dv dz i hat plus du dz minus dw dx j hat plus dv dx minus du dy k hat now this is beautiful you'll notice because if we have 2d flow that means we can only have rotational uh, rotation in the out of plane direction right so if things are rotating this way that means they're going to be um, the rotation is going to point out or in to the out or into the page um, be, and if we look at this we have w dx that's zero dv dz well there's no v in the z direction there's no z v uh, sorry there's no z dependency on v same with u same with w again so all we get is this so dv dx um, now, psi is equal to dv dx, which is um, negative 2, negative 2y, two um, minus du dy, which is 2y, which gives us which gives us uh, 4, negative 4y. Four so this is not equal to 0, so it is rotational flow. And now is it um, dilating? Well, we uh, looked at this earlier, and we got, when we plug it in, we get 1 over dv, our dilatational um, expression is equal to the partial of u with respect to x plus the partial of v with respect to y plus the partial of z with respect w with respect to z and um, we plug this in and we got negative 2x minus 2x is equal to 0 so it is incompressible or at least it's not changing in its density it's it um, but it is rotating because we got a non-zero value for our um, vorticity. Great.